Hey peeps, we are back. We are talking Love After Lockup, season four, episode nine. Hey, before we get into the video, please do me the honors of subscribing to my channel, hitting the notification bell so you can always be notified when I post new content, hitting the thumbs up because that does wonders for my channel, and share. Thanks. Chaz and Branwyn. Okay, so I've got a little bit of an update on Chaz and Branwyn's storyline. So earlier when we first see Branwyn get out of jail, Aaron is there and her and Chaz were saying that Aaron is the cause of her getting locked up this last time. But it turns out that that is not true. Aaron is an ex of hers, but the actual ex that is the cause of her getting locked up his name is Michael, and it was Michael and Courtney. Courtney is the guy that we heard in the episode talk to her on the phone. They are the ones that was in the hotel with her, allegedly, when she got arrested. Allegedly, they found out the cops were coming and they took off. The guy, Michael, was supposed to be on Love After Lockup, but he got arrested. So they allegedly asked Aaron to fill in. So... Aaron, even though he is an ex, he's not the ex that they are portraying he is on the show. This to me is just ridiculous. This also just seals the deal for me that a lot of this is scripted or a lot of this is just production um, pulling strings behind the scenes. So this ex gets locked up. We'll just keep the same storyline and enter the ex prior to. Uh, this is just weird, but this is what Branwyn's friend is saying. She's also saying that the Courtney guy was supposed to be the person that Branwyn moved in with, but due to him having some legal issues, allegedly, she ended up having to move in with her friend Jessica's baby daddy. That's what they call him, the baby daddy. So anyway, these people are doing too daggone much. I just cannot. Anyway, Branwyn is going to meet up with her daughter so that they can get their hair done. And it turns out that Branwyn's daughter is following in her footsteps and she too is a stripper. We know that Branwyn is 40 years old. Her daughter is 19 and she says that she has spent 11 of those 19 years in jail. Her daughter, Arian, lets us know that when you add up all the time together that she has lived or spent time with her mom, it's been about six months. That was total heartbreak for me as a mom. I can tell you one thing that I know that they both have in common. They both love big eyelashes. I just can't stand it. It's almost as if they have caterpillars just hanging off the lids. I, I just, I hate it. Her daughter does not find Chaz attractive. She says he is not the type of man her mom usually dates. She usually dates more young, muscular, attractive men. And you know what I'd like to say to her daughter, those young, attractive, muscular men uh, don't seem to be the thing for your mama. They all seem to have some sort of alleged drug problem and they all end up in and out of jail. Her daddy, for, for instance, Branwyn says that he's been in and out of jail her whole life as well and she's just been moved around from family member to family member. Also can I just say all of that cleavage was a way too damn much for me. I was not a fan and I really did not appreciate how she sat in the middle of the car with all that cleavage hanging out and her legs spread open. Listen slide over to the other side of the car. I know you want some TV time but that's a bit much. Button up that coat you have on a coat, your mom has on some kind of shawl coat type of parka thing. Chaz is wearing some sort of jacket. It's obviously cold and chilly there. Zip it up. You didn't have an extra shirt you could have thrown on. You know you're gonna meet your mama's new man. This is just weird. I don't, I don't, mm -mm. I am not all right. Branwyn says that she might have to choose between her daughter and Chaz and she doesn't know who would win. Personally, there should not be a competition. You have been in jail for 11 years out of this girl's 19 years that she has been living. She says that she has only been around you or with you for six months of her entire life. 
there should be no Chaz as far as I'm concerned. When you got out of jail, you should have moved in with Jessica's baby daddy, got yourself a job and some therapy for both you and your daughter. And then maybe you and her could have gotten together and moved to a whole nother state and started life anew. Thinking about a man should be the last thing on your list. You should be focused on figuring out how you and your daughter can heal and move forward. Put your children first. I think that Chaz should try to make better decisions. Um, there has been a lot of red flags with this relationship with Branwyn and a lot of red flags with Chaz. Chaz seems to be extremely insecure and too needy. They have not consummated this marriage. She is talking about seeing if she can get her 19 year old daughter to move down to Kentucky with them. And I'm just not sure that this is going to be a good mix. A brand new, just got out of jail marriage, a teenage daughter, none of this seems right for me. I don't think this couple is gonna make it. Not to mention last episode, she did tell production that she is still in love with Aaron. Then they show Chaz paying for both of them to get their hair done. And let me just tell you, I didn't see much of a difference with Aaron's hair. And the difference that I did see with Brandwin's hair, it, it wasn't that gorgeous. It really wasn't. The man paid almost $600 for the two of them to get their hair done. This is a hell to the no. I mean, are you kidding me? You should have went down to Supercuts. I mean, what in Sam hell? No, ma'am. Anyway, after that, they go for a little dinner because you know she has to be in the house by six o'clock. So they're probably eating dinner at 4 p.m. Anyway, they go out for dinner and Chaz's credit card declines. Well, the daughter says, well, I was working last night and I've got all these tens. And then she makes this comment that he can't even afford dinner. How's he going to take care of my mom? Didn't he just afford $600 so that you and your mom can get your hair done? The least you and your mama could do is pay for dinner. I mean, seriously, some people are really ungrateful as hell. Now let's get to Chaz. Chaz is very insecure, very jealous and needy. She is on the phone talking to this Courtney dude and Chaz, who is that? He's asking questions. I mean, she's on speakerphone. He was staring her dead in the face while she's having this conversation. I said, wait a minute, this is speakerphone. You don't have to look down her throat to hear the conversation. Mind your business and eat your sandwich. Then she tells the guy that she loves him and Chaz says, I love you too. Uh, excuse me. He's also screaming, you got married. You got married. You know, he wants her to let this man know that she is married. You are doing too much. But then she gets a little angry with him and says that she's not used to, you know, having to answer questions regarding her friends. Personally, I think that she is protesting too much. I think that Branwyn is hiding a lot. Her and her daughter's actions are throwing up major red flags. And Chaz, listen, save your money and get a therapist. This is too much. Anyway, you guys, we'll see what happens with this couple. Indy and Harry. So Indy is at home with her daughter. They're playing, having a good time. Harry is not there. She hasn't seen him for a couple of days and her mom, Yolanda, pops up. Let me just say that I love Yolanda and I think that she deserves her own bounty hunter show. We TV, pay attention. This could be ratings gold. He shows up and Andy wants to know, what are you doing popping up here? Now, every mom knows. You can tell when your child is going through something. As soon as you hear their voice, you know if it's all good or if something is wrong. And Indy didn't want to share with her mom what was going on. So her mom took that long five or six hour drive and popped up. But that's what moms do. Indy finally lets her mom know that Harry has been spending days away. And her mom says, that sounds female-ish to me. And I said, you know what, Yolanda, it does not take a private investigator bounty hunter to figure that out, right? Her mom tells her to get Harry on the phone. She wants to talk to Harry. So Indy, of course, calls Harry and tells him that she's going to come and pick him up. He tells her that he's at his sister Carla's house. So Yolanda then calls her son, who is very handsome. And the son tells Indy that she needs to just come on home. This makes no sense. He says, all right, you've got this out of your system. Come on home. And Yolanda says, oh, she's coming with me. Me, myself, I would not have wasted time talking to Harry. I would have came to the house and just immediately started packing her and my granddaughter's items and then forcefully threw both of them in the car. We are out.
okay? I would leave a note for Lydia and some cash. Thank you so much for your hospitality. We are out. No. Mm -mm. Rhonda told Indy that they need to have a spiritual divorce party, okay? Oh, What's up? Andy was crazy for coming out here. And Terry stupid too. <laughs> Everybody involved, stupid. Just dumb. And your ass went in at 17 <laughs> and you coming out still 17. Get out. Get the f out. Yolanda is after my heart. I absolutely love that this woman cut right to the chase. I love that she let him know that everybody involved is stupid and dumb. Terry, Andy, him, and that he is 17. He went into jail as a 17 year old teenager and he came out of jail 24, but still with the mentality of a teenager. But I also need Yolanda to keep that same energy with Indy because Indy is 29 years old, but she's acting as if she's also 17. She also called Harry out for telling Indy that Terry is better than her, that Terry has X, Y, and Z and Indy doesn't have anything. You know, that was really disgusting for Harry to say that to Indy because Indy did have a job in an apartment that she left to come be with Harry who has absolutely nothing. That was Indy's mistake. Terry made a mistake as well. She lost her job for Harry who has absolutely nothing. The best part for me is when she put Harry out on the street. She said, I don't know where I just dropped him at, but I do know that he is still in the city of Cleveland. I hope she is headed straight to Lydia's house to pick up her daughter and granddaughter and go back to Maryland. Taylor and Chance. Bobby has come home. Chance has been out of jail for only three weeks and he has already caused major issues and a nasty infection. He has brought that prison love to the house. That is too much. I'm still grossed out. Anyway, he says that he's going to offer Bobby a formal apology. And I said, yeah, that's because you know that Bobby sees you 100%. Taylor, Miss Goofy, I'm going to laugh out my way through this nightmare, doesn't see you for who you really are. But Bobby does. And that's why you want to give her a little bit of an apology. Bobby gets there and listen, I think prison Bobby arrived. Listen, she let him know to his face exactly what she thinks about his bitch ass. She tells him that she will absolutely be watching him because she loves her sister and she loves those girls and she is not going to allow him to come into their home and take over or hurt them. She also told him that she notices that he has a short fuse and a temper and that he is rude. She said, you came in here on your first day and tried to change everything. You're acting like you are a boss. And he makes this comment that he is an alpha. Okay, really? <laughs> no. 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 Uh, no. You are not an alpha. You don't have anything. Uh, real alphas know how to dominate. They know how to lead. They know how to provide. Uh, no, <laughs> you don't have shit. You are not an alpha. You are not even a beta, okay? You're a zero, you know, I don't know. Buddy, no, I'm sorry, you don't have shit. So you cannot be an alpha. Then he has the nerve to ask Bobby for his blessing to marry Taylor. Bobby tells him it's too soon. She says, Taylor doesn't really know you. You don't really know her. She tells him that if he really does mean it, he can go ahead and ask her sister. However, if he hurts her sister, there is gonna be a problem. She also told him that she will be watching and the first time that he does anything ridiculous, gets loud, blows up temper or anything, she said, I will shut this wedding down. Honey, now listen, uh, Bobby is not here for this. You tried it, Chance, and I think you really met your match this time. Also, I think that Brad Pitt should sue Chance or at least get a cease and desist. I do not believe that Brad Pitt and Chance are family members. I don't buy it. And even if so, please stop playing with Brad Pitt's good name. I mean, listen, I am a, well, 
not now, but I was a diehard fan of Brad Pitt. Let me tell you, it was the legend of the fall, the interview with the vampire, the meet Joe Black Brad Pitt. Lord, I wanted to get at man children. I'm just saying, chance gone somewhere. Do not try to soil Brad Pitt's name. Lacey and Antoine, honey, now listen, this couple is just ridiculous. She meets up with her sister and her sister wants to meet Antoine, of course. She's telling her sister how he came home from jail and all he does is complain and he is so ungrateful. And then in the next breath, he's the man of her dreams. I said, well, damn it, your dreams and my nightmares are totally the same thing. You know, listen, this man is nobody's dream. Listen, get down in the comments, peeps. Is Antoine the man of your dreams? Do you do you want him? Because to me, he is an absolute nightmare. I'd rather have Freddy Krueger as my- This is it, Jennifer. Your big break in TV. Welcome to prime time, bitch. And I mean, at least he's got a sense of humor. He shows up for dinner with a new face tattoo. I said, boy, you need a new face tattoo like you need a hole in your head. Actually, there could be a hole in his head. He's an idiot. Um, she says that she is really upset about this tattoo. She has asked him not to get any more tattoos on his face. And I said, oh, but no, he's the man of your dreams, okay? Then she mentions to him that she has been telling him for months not to get another face tattoo because it's already gonna be hard for him to get a job considering that he's a felon, but now adding more face tattoos, it is going to be rough. And I would have to agree, you know, at my old career, I used to hire people. Even though it's not right, people do look at stuff like that. If you're willing to put tattoos all across your face, what else are you willing to do? On top of the face tattoos, you've got this criminal record you like to steal. Uh, no, I thank you for your application. Uh, we'll get back to you. Her sister asked him, where does he see him and Lacey in five years? And he said he didn't have a vision of that, that he didn't have any goals. Okay, the man of my dreams has goals. Um, the man of my nightmares, he doesn't have any goals. What? This dude is incredibly immature. He has never known responsibility. He has always lived with his mom. He has never owned anything. Nothing has ever been in his name. He is talking to his ex-girlfriends. Lacey, you left a stable marriage of 20 years for this. The man of your dreams with the face tattoos and the bad haircuts. Lacey's sister told him the truth. She said, look, the world doesn't owe you anything. You should absolutely be grateful to my sister that she loves you and she's willing to take care of you. He doesn't care. I guess having her sister by gave her a little bit of courage because all of a sudden she wants to put down the rules. She tells him that she doesn't want to be in a relationship with somebody that just take, take, take. She's trying to have a relationship with somebody who wants to provide, give, share, create, and build. She says that she's not here for driving him around, dropping him off, and taking care of all of his needs and putting everything in her name. Well, if that is the case, then you need to drop his things off at his mama's house. He's been out of jail for four or five days or whatever, and he's not out looking for employment. He's out spending his stimulus money on a new face tattoo, booze, and weed. Um, girl, please give him to his mama because he is for the streets. She goes on to let him know that she has been taking care of him. She has been putting money on his books and how dare he go spend his money on some cheesy, ugly tattoo. Now that's where I have to agree. You don't have to put a WA for Washington on your face. Uh, you know you from Washington, right? Oh, I cannot. Anyway, she tells him that she's sure that she can find somebody else. And I said, well, I'm questioning that. If you are positive that you can find somebody else, how did you end up with this dude in the first place? I don't know. And remember, this is the man of your dreams. He tells her, uh, let him know how that works out, finding somebody else. Honey, like I said, pack up his shit and drop it off at his mama's house. Get your locks changed and a new security code. Um, he's got to go. This relationship is not going to work. Then we see him go visit his mom 
and she's trying to hug him and hold on to him and kiss him and everything. And he's trying to, it was almost like watching a wrestling match. He's trying to get away from her. He's not used to that mother-son love, I guess. That was a little bit sad. But we also find out that she has stage four cirrhosis of the liver. I said, damn. She has to stay sober for six months in order to get on the transplant list. And he says that he's not sure his mom can stay sober for six months. I tell you what, if that had been my mom, I would have grabbed my phone and tried to find a rehab place that I could put her in. At least one of the ones for 90 days to see if I can help her get sober because you can't get on the transplant list for six months. And Lord knows if this woman can stay sober. I just don't know. He tells his mom that she's got to stop getting drunk and she's definitely got to stop getting drunk and then telling Lacey everything because it upsets their relationship. And she says that she wants him and Lacey to work out. But then she tells him that a bunch of his ex-girlfriends have been calling her. And I said, yeah, if you really wanted him and Lacey to work out, you wouldn't mention the ex-girlfriends. And he says that he's been talking to some of them. But Lacey doesn't need to know that. I think Lacey does know that and she just is trying to act blind to the situation. Lacey, it's time for you to put your big girl panties on and get rid of this child. Send him back to his mama's house. Rick and Ray Dean. Yuck mouth. They call me Yuck Mouth because I don't run. Oh, I like my teeth like this, baby. Is out at this biker shop with Rick and she wants to buy this motorcycle leather jacket that's a little bit over $600 and Rick says she's a Gucci chick. Uh, no, uh, no, no, she's not. Um, she is a Walmart chick. Okay. She is a thrift store chick. Uh, no, there is nothing about Snagatooth that says she is a Gucci chick. Okay. She ends up getting a jacket that's like $250. Rick says that's still too much. He can't really afford it, but he buys it for her anyway. Then Rick takes her for a ride and Love After Lock Up camera people, the editors are real shady. They zoom in on Rick's boots that are falling apart. Like they are ripped and frayed. And I said, dude, your bike boots are absolutely about to fall off your feet. And you just spent $250 on yuck mouth. I mean, it's just too much. He wants to talk to her about their relationship. And he says, well, Kay is not going to be um, out of jail for several years. And she gets upset with him and tells him that she's sick of him bringing Kay up. And it's starting to piss her off. And Rick says that he wants to make their relationship social media certified. He wants to post that he's in a committed relationship with her. And I said, now, Rick, you are in your 50s. What the hell? Are you talking about you want a Facebook official committed relationship? What the shit? I'm thinking, you know what? 17, 20 year olds, they want to do that whole Facebook committed relationship shit. Uh, please grow the hell up. Okay. You don't belong with this woman. He tells her that he feels like he's second place and he deserves to be first. She tells him that he has a place, but clearly it's second. I said, Rick should feel like an idiot right now. This woman is sitting here in your $250 jacket, letting you know that you are absolutely last place. Cause she didn't even say second. She said, you have a place. Boy, I would have asked her if she could stand up and let me check out her jacket again. I'd have took that jacket right off her back and got on my motorcycle and left. No, ma'am. She had the nerve to look him dead in the face and tell him that he needs to trust and believe in their relationship. Really? He should trust and believe that this married woman is telling him the truth. Okay. Then they're back at Rick's house. They've had a night together. She spent the night at his house. They're outside chain smoking in the garage and it's clearly freezing outside drinking coffee. And I thought both of you with these bad teeth are out chain smoking, drinking coffee. Oh, I just get sick thinking about it. Anyway, he brings up the fact that he would like her to live with him instead of being at her parents. And I said, are you bringing this up again? 
she gets so upset about it and in the middle of her telling him that she is not going to be moving in with him and he could forget it and stop bringing it up her dad calls well one thing that i thought was weird i said these men on love after lockup they are a mess as soon as her phone rings and she says hello he says who is it i can't be in a relationship like that this is my phone okay who's on this phone is not your business okay this is my phone um anyway it's her dad and when she gets off the phone he says is that your pet convict i don't know why he did that she told him cling the hell off she told him that he better never disrespect k again and that he better never say anything bad about k because k is a good person and he says, well, I guess we'll find out in four years. And she said, yeah, if you're still around. He just sat there stunned in the face. She said that she was going to walk away before she hit him. I said, oh, little tiny woman, you better go on somewhere. The Rick should have put out his cigarette and closed his garage door and locked all the rest of the doors and left her selfish ass outside in the cold. But no, Ramona comes out to have a conversation with Ray Dean. Right off the rip, Ramona tells her that she doesn't believe that Ray Dean is emotionally invested in Rick at all. She also let her know that she doesn't feel that she takes Rick's feelings into consideration at all and that if she's not ready to be with him, she needs to wash her hands of him and move on. And that's what her dad said. Her dad said, if you don't want to be with him, if you don't love him, I did not raise you to use somebody. Let him go. She also lets Ray Dean know that she is absolutely positive that Ray Dean does not care about him the way he cares about her. And that's all facts. Ramona said no lies. She said he's been supporting you for four years. Ray Dean gets all upset and she said, you act like you know me. You don't know me. Ramona says, yes, but I've seen your actions and I'm not judging you. Dean couldn't handle Ramona or her mouth. And she tells Ramona, well, I'm done talking. Have a good day. And Ramona tells her to be gone. Ramona says that Raydeen rolled Rick. She saw him as a mark. He's been sending her money and she's using him. Ramona never lied. After the episode aired, Ramona posted a tweet and she said, laugh out loud. I called it. I knew that bitch was lying when she asked us to do this show investment in their future my left tit i hope she chokes on her baby shark tea <laughs> oh my God. ramona is savage and i am here for it kayla and martell so kayla is sitting out in the parking lot on the last episode we saw her drive off from the barbershop where well, she came back she tells the producers that she is not the type of girl to put up with his shit I said, no, ma'am, you are absolutely the type of girl to put up with his shit because if you weren't, you wouldn't be sitting in this park a lot. Okay, stop lying. Okay, there is no way that I would have been sitting in that parking lot. I would have been back at my house, packing up his little bit of shits, calling his PO to let his PO know that all of his items have been taken over to his mama's house where he needs to be paroled to because he cannot stay here gets in the car and he goes off on her again about her being late to pick him up telling her that she needs to lower her voice and respect him boy you ain't shit she finally gets a little bit of her mind together and she goes off on what you thought i work my mother ass off i do everything that i can for you and every time i turn around you sit up here trying to disrespect me trying to tell me what the to do when to do it how to do it why to do it what are you bringing to the table because i am the mother Table. This bitch is in my name. I'm maintaining this bitch every time. Every time. Every month I'm paying the car note. Every month I'm paying the car insurance. And she let him know that she has been taking care of him and doing everything for him. And he doesn't bring a damn thing to the table. And everything she was saying was 100% true. You have been in jail for 13 years. You don't have a pot to piss in or a window to throw it out of. And you sitting here driving her car. I was extremely pissed off when she slid over so that he could drive. Does this dude have a driver's license? Did the halfway house let him go to the DMV to get a driver's license? When you're in jail for 13 years, you don't have a driver's license that's valid. And why should he be driving her car talking shit? You want to talk shit to me? Uh, say it walking, bitch. Uh -uh. You've got to earn respect. I hate to say this, but I think that if the cameras were not there and the producers were not following in the car behind them, that he might have put his hands on her. 
I don't, I don't trust this man at all. When she tells him to get out of her car and he doesn't get out, I tell you what, I would have ripped my keys out of the ignition, went around to his side of the car, opened up the door and insisted, get out of my car. We are done. We are done. But no, we find out that she checks herself into a hotel and lets him stay at her house. I said, well, how the hell, what part of the game is this? Because I... Yeah, somebody left that out. I missed it. Uh-uh. She says that he's on home confinement to her address, so he had to stay at her house. See, that's the problem. This argument took place early in the day. That was enough time to call his PO. Uh, this isn't his house. Um, He's going to need to home confine at a shelter or at his mama's because he can't be here. Uh, no. No, no, you cannot disrespect me and talk crap to me at a place where I pay all the bills. This is a hell to the no. So anyway, we see him wearing fake Gucci head to toe and she comes home and apologizes to him and is ex expecting him to apologize back to her and then gives him the sex. Girl, bye. If this is how he acts fresh out, this is how he is going to be forever. He is disrespectful, he is conceited, he is a chauvinist, he is clearly a liar and your feelings don't matter. Anyway, you guys, get down in the comments and let me know what you think. And until next time, bye.